So uh, for this, I've been working on two areas. The first one was uh, river level monitoring. So here the idea was to try to use deep learning to estimate river levels from CCTV images looking at rivers. So to do this here, uh, for the example in this picture, what I did was uh, use a deep learning model to extract the water pixels from the image. I use the number of water pixels as a proxy to monitor the evolution of the river level. And today, what I'm going to talk to you about mostly is uh, trash blockage detection. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, um, if you don't know what uh, a trash bin is, it, it's a method that is used to prevent debris from entering critical parts of river networks, such as apps or pumping stations. Uh, yeah, where was I? <laughs> and, and so, the, the problem with uh, the trash bins is that debris can build up at the trash bin location and generate thread images. So it's really important to try to monitor the blockage at this location. First, for maintenance purposes, of course, to ask for maintenance crews to act uh, and clean the trash bins or local communities, but also to integrate the blockage information to uh, thread models. And so one of the ways to do this is to use uh, trash bin cameras, so cameras that are looking at trash queens, but you can imagine that monitoring these cameras manually can be very tedious. So what we've been doing in this project in collaboration with several councils from the Black Country and the Environment Agency is try to develop deep learning strategies that will allow to automate the monitoring of the blockage uh, using deep learning. So for example here, using the image of a trash bin use the deep learning model to try to estimate whether it is blocked. And so I added some additional constraints. So the method needs to detect the blockage on any new unseen camera. So I have one single model because we don't want one model per camera. As you can imagine, it would be a very compute, uh, heavy computing intensive. And we also want to minimize the manual intervention. So we don't want to have to label uh, many images for each new camera that we want to use. So to start with this research, what I did was to actually build the data set of uh, trash bin images. So what I did was to uh, gather images from the Southwest Environment Agency website, where there were 54 trash bin camera feeds available. There, during uh, about 10 months, I progressively downloaded that, that set of 80,000 images. And I progressively uh, labeled all of these images using a small interface. Uh, and an image would have one of three labels. So clean, if the trash bin actually looked clean, like here on the left. Other, if I didn't know what was going on, like here, for example, uh, someone has put his yellow jacket uh, on the camera, so uh, <laughs> what's going on? And uh, finally, if we see some debris at the location, uh, uh, then I label it as blocked. And so at the end, I had about 40,000 clean images, 11,000 blocked ones, and 26,000 for which I wasn't sure. <clears throat> And so once I, I had this data set, I asked myself two questions. The first one was, do we really, really need to label all of this data? So can't we use a model that could be independent from the labeling of the data so we can build this kind of model easily? And also, if necessary, it is possible if we have a good method and we can improve its accuracy to still label uh, images from a new camera that we are going to install. And so what I wanted to do was to compare three different approaches to do this. So a binary classifier that would uh, distinguish blocks from clean images, an anomaly detection approach that doesn't need any label, and an image similarity approach, where here the idea is that we can take advantage of a few sample of labeled images from a new camera. 
So the binary classifier is quite simple. So it takes as input an image and it outputs a blockage score. If this score is about is above a given threshold, then the image is considered as blocked. If not, it's clean. And so this method is basically trained in all of the clean and blocked images that I have labeled in my data set. And to use to train the network, I use the ResNet 50 architecture. That's if you know a bit about plumbing, it's really a classic architecture uh, using computer vision. And I, as I said, I really consider this as the baseline method that uses all of my data set and does not make any assumption on the availability of uh, new images. So the anomaly detection uh, has a similar process to the classification approach. So this time uh, we are into a different score, but the big difference here this time is that uh, we don't need any labels to train the method. So trash here should be considered as an anomaly because as you notice, I have much less uh, blocked images than clean ones. And so the idea is to do this, uh, I reused uh, methods of anomaly detections from the state of the art. The idea is to represent each image with a small vector of feature extracted from a pre-trained network and fit a multivariate Gaussian uh, to the training vectors of the training images. And then when I have a new image, I can compute its distance to the multivariate Gaussian using uh, the same representation. For the CMS network, here uh, the process is a bit different. So we have a new image for which we want to know the label. And we, want, we also have a reference image that we have labeled uh, of the same camera. And the same is network is going to output a similarity score between the two images. And so uh, if we know that the label of the reference image is clean, for example, and the two images are similar, it means that the, the new image looks clean and uh, inverse. And so what's interesting with this is that we can use more than one image and then we can make an average of all of this score to obtain a more accurate blockage score for a given image. So then to evaluate this, I very classically tried to divide my data set between the cameras. So I had four to six to train, four to validate the parameters of my method, including the threshold used to categorize between blocks and uh, clean images. And I had a first test camera that I picked manually to be sure that they had uh, interesting and representative field of view uh, from my data set. And I used uh, two different scores, so I won't go too much into details, but basically balanced accuracy is a way to take into account the imbalance between the number of clean and blocked images. And the rock score allows to not consider this threshold that needs to be validated because my impression, and it will be conf confirmed in the next slide, is that the optimal threshold between the different test camera can be different. And in practice, uh, it wouldn't ask much to change this threshold for a, a given camera. So uh, here are the, the results. So on the left uh, is the balance accuracy score, on the right is the rock score. So basically, the binary classifier and the image similarity approach all obtained quite good results, about 0 0.9 uh, for three out of the four locations. <laughs> so yeah, the binary classifier is in red and the image similarity is in pink. And the anomaly detection in blue obtains the worst results at each of the location, but this time this approach did not need any uh, label. And so uh, also the same network here, in average, you can see that it obtains the best results with only five reference images that were used. And the classification threshold, as I said, doesn't really generalize very well, because as you can see, the rock stars are above the balanced accuracy. 
And yeah, uh, as we've seen, the bar set of location, so the third location, you can see that at each time is the worst location, uh, so that obtains the worst results. So I wanted to investigate what was going on there. <coughs> uh, and what I saw was that I actually had many false positives. So I labeled these images as clean because the leaves that you can see near the trash bin are not really blocking the waterway, but my network consider these images as uh, blocks because it sees leaves or branches. But yeah, these are disputable uh, images. I also have some false positives, but in much smaller number at other location. And for someone like the one on the bottom right, we can see some branches there. And also there are quite uh, disputable uh, images that were mislabeled. So maybe, uh, yeah, it could also be that there's mislabeled these, these images. So uh, I also performed uh, an additional experiment uh, to try to analyze the influence of the number of uh, reference images on the accuracy of the Siamese network, so the image similarity approach. And what I noticed, as you can see here, is that once we have labeled uh, 10 images on camera, the method doesn't really improve after that. So it means basically, I think that the borderline cases that I presented you in the previous slides remain wrongly detected, so the method can't improve uh, after a uh, given uh, value. Um, yeah, so that's already it for, for my presentation. So I developed approaches to monitor fresh uh, through uh, using deep learning. So I have a baseline classifier that works already quite well. I can improve these results using the image similarity approach but that needs a new sample of images uh, annotated for the new camera. And the anomaly detection approach for the moment obtains clearly the, the worst results. And so what, what I'd like to do in the future is to try to provide more information regarding the state of the trash bins, because for the moment it's only a category. And what we really want is a more uh, accurate information, such as the percentage of trash bin blockage. And to do this, I think that I will have to go again through anomaly detection or unsupervised approaches. I don't need any labels because labeling such information can be quite difficult. But also the, the problem with my current approach is that it doesn't work at night because either the RGB images uh, return black images because there is no lightning or there is no standardized way to observe a trash bin night. So for the moment, it, it's a problem. And in the future, I also like to integrate this into practice because for the moment, it's hard to, to give a sense to, to the number of uh, balanced accuracy values that are showed. 